Okay, um, as you all know, uh, BBMA was uh, founded by Omali from Malaysia, I think about 10 years ago. So if you guys want to check out the notes that I have, that I'm using right now, it's in my website, so you can access that later on. Um, okay, let's move on. So tonight we'll be talking about, um, first of all, the most important thing in uh, kiting is decision making. So in BBMA, for in order for you to uh, come up with a good decision is basically to understand uh, the candlesticks formation and understanding um, the difference between candle breaks and candle rejects. And then later on, I'm going to just browse through the MT4 uh, familiarization. And I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to post the BBMA settings. I think everyone has already that uh, sorted out. For those who just started uh, learning BBMA, then just make sure that the settings that you have is the correct one. Okay, then we will move on with uh, Bollinger Bands and Moving Average Fundamentals. I will be talking about Bollinger Bands, uh, the different types and how the market moves when on this particular type of the Bollinger Bands. And then we'll talk about the functions of the MA5 and 10, the EMA50, and then maybe we'll, we'll take a break in the middle and after the break we'll talk about extremes. Um, for tonight, I'm not going to talk about all the different types of extremes. But I will, I will be talking about uh, two very important types of extremes, which is um, uh, the extremes that I mean outside of the Blinger Band and extremes during sideways, because that's really important for you during um, the re-entry part. Okay. So after that, uh, we'll talk about signals and setups. Um, if we do have time, we'll talk about market structure. But however, we'll, we'll be talking about multi-time frame analysis towards the end or to air or in between. If I see a good uh, market, then maybe we can do a live trade instead. And then maybe towards the end, uh, if we have some time, then we'll talk about money management. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to go straight to this. So this is just uh, the basic uh, candlesticks um, parts. So in Forex or any other pairs that we, we trade on, there's two different candles, there's buy and sell candle, bull or bear. But the most important thing is that you know how these candles are formed. Okay, so in the next few slides, we'll be talking about, and I'm going to explain on how these candles are being formed and how it uh, gives you the uh, decision making in terms of identifying candle breaks and candle reject. All right, so let me just go back. So the only difference between the two candles is obviously the bull candle opens from the bottom and closes at the top and the cell candle opens at the top and closes at the bottom. Both the low and the high areas, uh, parts of the candles are the same. Okay, so basically from candle open to candle close is the candle body and, uh, and obviously the shadow and the wick is as shown. All right, just a quick uh, MetaTrader for um, familiarization for those who just st started trading. So basically what we have here at the bottom, um, we have X and Y axis. So you need to understand that um, at the bottom is the date and time, and on the right-hand side is the price. So basically the candles are moving from left to right, and over time the candles are moving a long time, and obviously going up and down, changing the prices as well. But the most important thing to note on the MetaTrader is um, the time frames that we have here. So basically, if we have uh, the H1 time frame, so basically the time frame H1 tells you that each of these candles is one hour um, length. 
So basically the candles are being formed over the period of one hour. So if you have M1, that's one minute candles, you have five minutes candle and so on. Okay. All right, so for those who are using phones, um, it's also the same. For iOS and Android, you have date and time, and then you have the price. Um, you have the time frame selector on the top left corner of the phone. And for Android, you just tap on the screen, then your uh, radio functions will come out. So you can just choose well, what, are the, what are the things that you want to use. Okay. All right. So for those who just started um, learning BBMA, just bear with me on this one, because in BBMA we have um, two indicators. That is uh, sell and buy indicators. MA moving average high five. So I'm just going to call it Mahi five just to abbreviate it, so it's much more easier for me to pronounce. So moving average high is Mahi and moving average low is Malo, just to make it simpler. All right, so we have two set of indicators. We have sell indicators, uh, Mahi, and we have buy indicators, Malo. Okay, um, so let's just say that we're looking at the H1 time frame, and we have the time and obviously the price on the right-hand side. So let's just say that the price right now is, let's say, 8 in the morning, and the candle just opens at this particular price. Let's just say at uh, $2.50. Okay. So after 50 minutes, um, the price went down, let's say, to about $1.50. So obviously, as the, candle, as the price went down, the candle open area will never change its position. However, the candle color will, will change whenever the candle the price went below the candle open so if it went below then the co the color of the candle will change to whatever color that you set for your cell or bear candles okay so let's say another 50 minutes passed by and the price went up okay so as soon as it went past over the candle open and it changes to a buy buy candle again and it leaves a trail this is what we call a shadow wick. So the most important thing about the candle low is that we know that this is the lowest price level that the candle has been to. Okay. Another 50 minutes pass by, the candle moves up again, crossing the MA, five, MA high 5, MAHI 5 and MAHI 10, let's say at about $5 price. And another 50 minutes, the candle closes at 9 p.m. So it went back down to this price level, at uh, $3.50, for example. So at 9 p.m., as uh, so a correction, at 9 a.m., in this particular example, as soon as this candle closes, automatically there are two things that can happen. This candle is going to close, and the other candle is going to open. So this is how the, the first candle is being formed. Let's say, for example, that the buy candle, how a buy candle is formed that it opens at the bottom and closes at the top. Regardless where it has been, as long as the candle open is at the bottom and closes at the top, then you have a buy candle. So automatically at 9 a.m., another candle opens at the same level of where the price has closed earlier on. Okay, let's just say that at 9.15, the price went up to MA high again, MAHI, and then Another 30 minutes, the price went down, crossing the MA low, MA low, all right? And then it closes at 9 a.m. So this is, um, this is just um, a simplified version of how the candles are being formed. However, in the real market, it's going to be a lot more different. But in order for you to uh, practice this and get your eyes um, familiar with the candlestick formation is probably best that um, whenever you're free, you have a free time that you go you go to M1 and it's much more quicker. The candles are being formed a lot quicker in every minute. So it gives you a rough idea of how the 
the other time frames are being formed. Okay. So um, we we have two sets of candles here. We have the buy candle that opens at the bottom and closes at the top, and then we have the sell candle that opens at the bottom and closes at the bottom. All right. So there are two things that you need to understand with this one. So whenever a candle rejects, so this is what we call reject. So obviously the candle goes through the MA, whichever MA it is, uh, Mahi or Malo. So it goes up and then it returns back in. So that's what we call rejection. So it tells you that the candle couldn't manage to break through this uh, barrier. Or let's just say, for example, that this is uh, resistance. All right. So whenever you have this, whenever you have a candle that rejects MA high, that is a point of entry sell. All right. And here at the bottom, we have what we call a candle break. So whenever a candle goes through a particular moving average or any lines in BBMA, because in BBMA, we have about eight lines, OK? You have three set of lines for Bollinger Band. We have four MAs, and we have one EMA. So that's about eight lines for each candle to break through and reject. So there's a lot of things to, to put in. However, we just need to uh, make it simplified uh, first, first and foremost, that we need, to, we just need to look at it uh, individually. All right. So when when the candle breaks, it goes through the the moving average or any lines in BBMA, and it closes um, below it or above it. So that's a candle break. So whenever you have a candle break, that's giving you a direction. So if it breaks, the buy indicators and tells you that the buyers have lost and the sellers are in and the direction of the market is going down. So in BBMA, that is uh, candlestick direction, OK? And let's have a quick um, refresh on that. So on the top left-hand side, this is what we call a candle break, uh, buy candle break. So this is a buy candlestick direction, OK? And then on the left, uh, just on the right, is a sell entry. At the bottom, we have a sell candlestick direction and a buy entry. So I hope you guys are are uh, familiar with this. And just keep on practicing. And you, in, in due time, you'll be able to uh, properly identify these things uh, in the market, OK? All right. So um, I'm just going to leave this for maybe a minute, just for you guys to double check um, what what's the um, settings are. So make sure that you have the right settings, OK? Okay, so I hope you guys uh, make sure that you double check the settings that you have because um, it's normal that most of the, most of the students that I have they sometimes have the wrong setups. Uh, sorry, settings. Okay, so the BBMA fundamentals. This is a very very important thing that you need to tell yourself. Okay. So first things first is we need to make sure that both candles and both moving average are not supposed to be outside of the Bollinger Band. So whenever it's outside, then it tells you that if the MA is outside the Bollinger Band, that indicates you extreme conditions. If the candle sits outside of the Bollinger Band, then it tells you that um, it's probably a momentum that indicates market strength or probably an extreme. So you need to be able to identify these things. However, you have to understand that any of the moving average or any of the candles, if they are outside of the Blinger Band, the market will try to push it back in. So when it goes back into Blinger Band, then you will create a re-entry. So we'll talk about that uh, later on. Okay. 
So um, bullying events, there's um, um, three lines, obviously top BB, mid BB, and low BB, all right? Um, so it acts like a dynamic support or resistance. Um, if you just want to make it simpler, it's just a, a highway or uh, a path for the candles to move into. Um, however, sometimes in extreme conditions, the moving averages are going outside and also the candles are outside the blinger band. So when these things happen, we know that it tells us a story. So we need to be able to understand what the market is trying to tell us and um, come up with a with a plan and how we're gonna enter the market. Okay, so I'm not gonna go with this. It's just straightforward that it tells you that top and low BB it tells you that if the if the market is at low BB indicates the market going upwards or going downwards. It all it also tells you that if there's a candlestick momentum, there's a strength of the market. So uh, I'll be talking about this in the next few slides. Mid BB is a uh, different, is a much more uh, important part of the blinger band because it tells you the um, the direction of where the market is going. All right, so it divides you between the buy and sell zone, and any candles that goes through the mid middle BB, it tells you that there's a potential of the market going to the other. Um, to the top or low BB, okay? So it's very important that you understand this concept. Okay, so there are two types of blinger band. Obviously, uh, first is sideways blinger band. So during sideways blinger band, before we even talk about this, we need to understand how do we define and how do we um, identify um, the sideways blinger band. So the market is not as um, perfect as this illustration that I have in front of you. The market is quite dynamic and it's not as nice as this in a straight line. So how do we actually know if the Bollinger Bands is sideways? So in my point of view, that as long as the top and low BB are pointing to the same direction, then that is a good indication that the market is Correction: the the blinker band is sideways. All right. So in here we have um, the market going sideways. So top and low are pointing to the same direction. All right. So what if the market is going up like that, and the blinker band is like that? So this is still sideways, even though it's going up, it's still a sideways blinker band. And let's just say that it's going down like that. It's still a sideways blinker band. So these are the things that you need to uh, really understand. Okay. So one thing to note during the sideways blinker band that every time the candle break and reject, again, that's the main reason why we talk about candlestick formation and the difference between candle break and reject. During sideways blinker band, every time the candle uh, break or a candle reject. For this example, let's say the market will try to go back to middle BB. It doesn't go straight to middle BB. It has other moving averages or other lines in Bollinger Bands, uh, other lines in BBMA to break in order to go to uh, the mid BB. All right. Let's just say over here, for example, that the candle break on the top, and obviously the, you have the reverse candle. It's, it's going to go to middle BB. However, it take a w it took a while until it goes to middle BB because let's just say, for example, that it was trying to break MA low. Okay, so as long as it doesn't break MA low, it's not going to go down. So those are the things that we really need to understand when it comes to these fundamentals. All right. So over here we have candle reject. So Whenever candle break or candle reject, the market is going to go back to middle BB. All right. So I'm just going to go to the charts just to have a quick. Um, okay. Let's just close this one up. Okay. Let me find a good market for you guys. All right. So 
That looks good. So, all right. So just bear bear with me in this one. While we're doing this, um, looks like we have a good signal over here. Okay, so let me just share the screen for you guys. Okay, can you guys see this? Can everyone see the screen? Okay, so just a quick quick one. So we have a potential re-entry here at G. Let's just check. All right. Okay. So let's just wait for that. In the meantime, let's talk about uh, the bling events. All right. So we have um, two different types of bling events. So obviously the sideways and momentum bling event. All right. So as you can see over here, this is a um, good example that we have um, we have a sideways blinger band over here, and then we have a momentum blinger band over here. Okay, so this is very important for you guys to identify. So during Sideways splitting a band. If a candle breaks or rejects, the market is going to go back to middle BB. So as you can see over here, it's a very good example that the candle break on the top, and you have a reverse. Then you have a retest, and you go back to middle BB. All right. So we'll talk about uh, extremes later on. But however, this is how the market. So it took this is a one hour time frame. So obviously from the first candle over here. So if you can see the the blinger band is over there. So you know that this candle is too far away from the blinger band. So this tells you that if you go back to the notes earlier on, the fundamentals of bling of BBMA, that if there's a candle that's outside of the blinger band or MA outside the blinger band, that's uh, an extreme condition, so it has to go back inside. So this is what happens over here. So that's the first. Um, this is a candle break. It goes back to middle BB. Then you have a candle reject. It goes back to middle BB. So what you need to understand about middle BB is that it divides um, the, the buy zone and the sell zone. All right. So what we need to understand about this, if there's the candle from the top going down the bottom, as long as there's no candle that breaks the middle BB, the candle wouldn't be able to go through low BB. So over here, it's been a few hours until there's a candle that managed to break through the middle BB. So it made a retracement after that to create a re-entry and then it goes back down to low BB. As soon as this um, candle that breaks through the middle BB, obviously it's going to go to low BB. And now, for example, over here, as soon as it managed to break, uh, reject low BB, it goes back to middle BB. So that is the the concept of this one. However, as we know that this is a downtrend market, Hang on, let me just. Close this one, and I'm going to close all the videos. So please, guys, make sure that you close your um, 
your webcams and other stuff, okay? All right, so is everyone clear with um, sideways blinker bands? So let's just go back to the notes earlier on. So that's a good example there at GU. We have a candle break and a candle reject, okay? So now let's talk about the second type of um, Bollinger Band. So now we have a Momentum Bollinger Band. So Momentum Bollinger Band is very obvious um, to identify. It's much more harder to identify sideways Bollinger Band, but it's um, a lot easier to identify Momentum Bollinger Band because top and low of the Bollinger Band is pointing away from each other, Okay, as you can see on the illustration. Okay. So whenever you have a, a momentum link event, it tells you that there's a significant market strength going upwards or going downwards, okay? And the most important thing that you need to understand when it comes to candlestick momentum is that every first candlestick momentum will create a re-entry, okay? So what is a candlestick momentum? A candlestick momentum, by definition, is the candle that closed outside of the momentum linger band. So over here at the top BB you have a buy candle. So a buy candle as we go back again from the early um, when we talk about candlestick formation the candle opens at the bottom and closes at the top. So the close part of the candle is outside of the linger band. Okay? So there you go. So even here at the bottom, we have a cell candle that opens at the top and closes at the bottom. So the close part is outside of the bigger band. All right. So let me go through with that. So we have a momentum bigger band over here. Okay. So top and low BB are open. So this is your first momentum. So every first momentum will create a re-entry. So over here, the candle is too far away from the Bollinger Band. So obviously, the market tries to go sideways because whenever it goes sideways, you have to understand that it's creating a re-entry. Okay, so this is what, what's happening right now. So if we put um, BBMA over here, so now the market is creating a re-entry sell at H1, okay? So that is um, what's happening, all right? So we missed that entry over there, all right? We'll look for another entry later on, don't worry about that. So that is a um, very important thing when it comes to identifying type of blink events, okay? So let me just go through again, just revise um, a little bit on sideways and momentum blink events. So obviously, at this particular part of the blink event, although it's it's um, moving in a regular pattern, but this, this um, blink event is sideways because top and low are pointing towards the same direction. Even over here, even though it's going up, but top and low are pointing towards the same direction. So it's more or less um, a sideways blink event. However, over here, there's a significant um, change of direction in the blink event. So you know that top and bottom are wide open. So this is a momentum blink event. All right? So I hope that this is clear. So let's move on. Okay, so again, when we talk about um, the types of Blinger Band, the most important thing that we need to know when it comes to sideways Blinger Band that if a time frame goes sideways, it indicates uh, to you, it tells you that it's creating a re-entry on a higher time frame. So this is very important for you to understand, okay? so. Usually, depending on the length of the sideways and depending, uh, correction, depending on the length of the, uh, the moment, uh, correction, the sideways PB, then it will dictate the strengths of the market movement later on. So, basically, during the sideways, it's creating a re-entry on a higher time frame, and as soon as that re-entry is completed, then obviously it went down on a on a on this manner. So there's a a big movement of the market as soon as the formation of the re-entry candle is completed. Okay? 
All right, I think um, we'll take a quick 10 minutes break. So if there's any questions, uh, you just keep it until the end. We'll talk about it later, okay?
All right. Um, let's start again. So, back to the to the class. Let's talk about uh, the moving averages. So, moving averages. Um, MA five. He has two functions. The first one is to detect extreme. Uh, detecting extremes means that uh, MA is outside of the blinker band, as um, shown over here. So you have extreme cell at the top, and also you have extreme cell uh, by at the bottom. Correction, extreme by at the bottom. The other function of the MA5 is the early point of entry. So basically, we already talked about this earlier on that every time the candle rejects Mahi 5 or, Ma, or Malo, Malo 5, that's an early point of entry for sell or buy. So as you can see over here, the market rejects Mahi 5. So this is an early uh, sell and as well over here. So this is an early re-entry sell. Okay, so when when we have um, correction, so now we talk about the uh, moving average ten. Let me just fix this thing so people. The sound is coming from the from the people going in and out of the the lecture. So just bear with that. All right, so. Continuing on, so when we talk about uh, MA10, the function of MA10 is to give us a more robust re-entry, so it's much more stronger. So over here we have a good example that when the candle rejects both MA5 and 10, so that's a much more stronger re-entry. Over here as well, you have both uh, Mahi, Malo 5 and 10 being rejected. So that's a much more stronger re-entry. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to go through this and uh, the chart so it's much more easier. Okay. So um, let's go through... Um, let's go for maybe UJ. Okay. So... Over here in UJ, I'm just going to delete some of this stuff, okay? So we're just going to talk about um, the moving averages, all right? So let's delete the blinker bands for now. So, okay, if we delete the blinker bands, as you can see that all of the candles are moving, you know, in between Mahi 5, correction, the Mahi and Malo. So if you can see... The market is traveling from Mahi and Malo, so that's that's how the market is trying to move. Okay, but there's another way that I use to actually it, for me to be able to know whether the the market is going sideways, if the blinker band is going sideways or is going uh, momentum blinker band. All right. So during sideways blinker band, we need to understand that the candles are traveling from Mahi to Malo. All right. So when you see this one over here, so this part over here, this is sideways blinker band because of the candles are moving from Mahi to Malo, Malo to Mahi, Mahi to Malo. So I know for a fact that this is a sideways blinker band. All right. So over in this part, okay, over at this part, I know for the fact that this particular part of the the area is a momentum blinker band because now the moving averages is following the candles, so it's going up. So we know there's a momentum over there. And again, over here, although it's going downwards, it's still a sideways blinker band until to this point. All right. So this is still a sideways blinker band because the market is moving from 
mahi to malo, malo to mahi. So that's how I define the blink event. All right. So let me just go back to that example just now. So as you can see, we know that um, there's a sideways blink event over here, and there's a particular momentum just over here. All right. So let's talk about the moving averages earlier on. So the function of MA5, regardless it's malo or mahi5, is, is a point of entry cell for mahi and point of entry by for malo. So that's really important for us to, to know. Okay. So let's just say over here we have a candlestick momentum cell. Then obviously when the candles, when the market rejects mahi5, that's an early point of entry cell. So that's really important for you all to understand okay and when you have a re-entry that uh, is being rejected by both mahi 5 and 10 so that's much more stronger re-entry as you can see over here so this market over here we have the candle rejecting mahi 5 and mahi 10 all right so if this is unclear there's also another indication over here for those people who understand candlestick formation. So we have a reversal indicator over here, which is um, a dodgy over there. So that's an early signal that tells you that uh, there's a potential market reversal at that particular point. All right. But over here, this is a robust reentry. It's a much more stronger reentry. Okay. All right. So let me go through again. So when you have the candle rejecting Malo, that's a re-entry buy. When you have the candle rejecting Mahi, that's a re-entry sell. All right. So when the candle breaks the moving averages, then it tells you that there's, there's a direction. For example, over here. So this candle breaks Malo 5 and 10, so it tells you that the market is going down. All right. As soon as you have this direction, then the market retraces back to the uh, Mahi, so this is a re-entry cell. So this is a point of re-entry. So you know that the market is going down. All right. Um, okay. So let's go back to. Okay. So hang on. Let's go back to the notes. So this is a very important. Um, piece of BBMA, um, it tells you the trend. Whenever I teach um, my friends about BBMA, it's very important for everyone to understand that in BBMA there are two different types of trend. One is the current trend and one is the major trend. When I talk about major trend, I'm talking about the trend in monthly, weekly, and daily. And when I talk about the current trend, that is H4, H1, and M15. So we need to be able to understand um, the the trend in both of this uh, area of the market because we need to understand which which particular time frame we're going into and what particular setup are we uh, are we trying to go into. So it's really important what what is the trend on major trend and current trend. What type of setup are we going into? And based on that setup, we know that this is a different type of trading style. So when you are entering a setup on a monthly time frame or monthly, weekly, or daily, then you know that this trading style will be based on a swing particular type of trading style. So you'll be entering the market on a longer period of time. So you're, you're, um, market projection or TP projection should be more than 100 pips and above, okay? So when we go to intraday, that will be on H4, H1, M15. And if you guys are going to do scalping, then you're going to focus on H1, M15, and M5. So these are the fundamentals that you really need to understand when it comes to identifying trends, okay? So um, in BBMA, the EMA50 is probably the most strongest line that we have because it tells you exactly where the market is going. 
So whenever the EMA is above mid BB, then it tells you that that's a downtrend. And whenever the market correction, the EMA 50 is below the mid BB. Whenever it crosses mid BB, it tells you that the start of an uptrend. So we need to very we need to be very vigilant in terms of identifying these trends, especially on identifying the setups. Okay. So before we move on to that, let me just have a quick um, alright. Okay. So over here um, it tells you that let's just go to monthly first. Alright. So on the monthly it tells us that the that this is an uptrend market because the EMA fifty is below mid BB. Alright. Weekly is above mid BB, so there's a a, a a contrast between the the trend between monthly and weekly, okay? And another one when we go to daily, so there's daily is still an uptrend. So when you have monthly and uptrend, weekly is downtrend and daily is uptrend. So there's a little bit of um, confusing part on this one. However, you need to understand um, that let's just say for example over here when you look at weekly that we need to be able to project the market so let's just say for argument's sake that I'm just saying that you know at some point that the EMA 50 will be crossing with BB at some point and maybe in two three weeks time so and that will be a crossing of the EMA 50 and the trend will be changing again, so it all depends on what happens on the lower time frame and what it has instilled. Okay, so based on this um, analysis, I would say that monthly, weekly, and daily is still an uptrend, although that EMA 50 is above mid BB over here, but there's a potential of crossing over over here, and the market is still going up. So I would say that overall on a major trend, UJ is on an uptrend market. So when we check uh, H4, H1, and M15, that will be going to uh, the current trend. So let me just delete this stuff. All right. So on a current trend, H4, we have a crossing of EMA50 over here. It tells us that uh, sell market has just started in H4. We'll check in H1 as well. There's a sell market as well, so downtrend, and then 15 downtrend. So if you're trading right now in on a daily basis, let's say for example you're scalping or intraday today, then it's probably a lot safer if you sell UJ because of the current trend. Okay. And what is really important when it comes to to EMA 50, as I said before, that usually when when this is just a giveaway, all right. I'm just gonna tell you something. Uh, very. This is how I identify my my setups. Okay. So in M15, I know that over here we have. Um, the EMA 50 going outside of the blinker band. All right. So every time there's a moving average or a candle going outside of the blinker band, there's a story behind it. We need to understand what it's trying to tell us. Okay. So whenever EMA 50 or any other candle or any other MA is outside the blinker band, the candles is going to go sideways. All right. So if it goes sideways for this instance, over here, if it goes sideways, then it tells you that the market is retracing to create a re-entry. So over here, if M15 is creating a re-entry, I know for a fact that this is creating a re-entry on H1. Okay, so usually I teach this um, on most of my friends and most of my students, so we know that 
every time at particular time frame it's outside of the AMA outside of the ring event we know there's a re-entry on a particular time frame so for this example we know that this is a re-entry cell on H1 okay so we know that this is the pinnacle of the entry for H1 so we will always be aiming to sell at this particular area so if you go here in H1 so this is what it has in H1 okay so it tells you where exactly the re-entry is gonna happen alright so let's have a have a test again alright so over here the EMA 50 is below mid BB so I know that it's uptrend and the EMA 50 is also the blue ringer band so whenever this thing is happen I know that it is creating a re-entry buy at H1 so let's just see okay so over here as you can see that it has created a re-entry by an H1 so it's pretty pretty obvious when it comes to uh, finding setups okay so on another example okay EMA 50 is outside over here and we know this is downtrend so it's pretty much straightforward I know that this is a re-entry this is a H1 time frame so I know that this is a re-entry cell on H4 okay so over here this is where the re-entry is happening so it's it gives you um, an indication of where the re-entry is happening and it also gives you a zone or an area for you to sell however there's a lot of things that you need to understand when it comes to multi-time frame analysis later on I'll talk about that alright so let's move on with the notes otherwise we're gonna run out of time okay so let's move on to the next part so let's talk about extreme okay hang up let me just get a quick sip of my cup of coffee so when we talk about extreme I'm talking about extreme MA is outside of the blinger band so this is just the generic um, extreme okay so when the MA is outside of the blinger band that is um, extreme okay so by definition this is just based on my own um, perspectives so when you have extreme it tells you that this is a signal that indicates to you that there's a potential market reversal so whenever you have MA outside of the blinger band so we know that you know the market is trying to reverse okay so why is gonna go why is it gonna go the other way because perhaps it's gonna go sideways or if you remember the fundamentals of BBMA the the MA and the candle shouldn't be outside of the Blinger band. If they're outside, that's abnormal for for the Blinger band. So the Blinger band correction: when the MA or the candles are outside the Blinger band, the candles, the market will try to move it sideways in order for it to go back inside the Blinger band. So when this happens, as soon as you know that there's a sideways, then you know that there's a re-entry happening. Okay. All right so that's the definition of it and that's how you need to pers uh, uh, that's the perception that you need to tell yourself because every time you have an extreme it doesn't tell you that it's gonna go reverse immediately that is only a signal alright so what are the characteristics of extreme so there are four okay so first of all you need to have uh, MA outside of living band so it's either top or low then you need to make sure that there's a reverse candle so as soon as you have a reverse candle then you know there's there's a potential of market reversal okay as you can see over here in the example you have the ME outside uh, going outside over here and then you have a reversal candle over here as soon as you have the reverse candle you have to mark the highest body and you need to wait for the retest as soon as you have you see the retest that's where you're supposed to be entering the market for that reversal 
However, you need to take your profit at the mandatory take profit, which is MA5, MALO5, MALO10, or MIDBB. But for me, I always take the safest one. I'm going to go for MA5 because, you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Because we call it mandatory take profit because of this, all right? This, for this example, this is extreme sell. Extreme sell tells me that there's a potential of market reversal, but we don't know. There's no confirmation yet. The confirmation for extreme is MLV. That is really important for you to understand. After an extreme, if there's an MLV, that, that confirms that signal, all right? So over here, if you didn't take your profit, then obviously it becomes a re-entry buy for this CSM. So if you look at it in a buy perspective, then you have a CSM, this is a re-entry buy. If you look at it in a sell perspective, you have extreme, this is TP Wajib or mandatory take profit. So these are the things that you really need to incorporate and in understanding the basic fundamentals of extreme, okay? So in my understanding and my own experience, by actually understanding and really, really, really knowing the fundamentals of extreme, it will give you uh, much confidence in terms of uh, going to entries because when you understand how extremes work, then it's, it will be a lot easier and a lot more, um, you will have a lot more confidence in your entry because most people have a lot of doubts in their entries because they, they don't understand um, the concept of extremes, okay? So we need to incorporate the re-entry setup with the extreme setups uh, correction, the extreme signals in the lower time frame. So we need, we'll talk about this in multi-time frame later on. So um, let's check the market for any extremes, okay? All right, so. Um, okay, let me find an extreme over here. All right, so this is a good example of extreme. So you have two different types of extreme over here. You have extreme uh, MA outside, and you have a sideways BB extreme over here. So um, the MA outside of uh, extreme over here, so that's the first signal. Uh, the first characteristics, then you have the reverse candle over here. As soon as you have the reverse candle, you mark the highest body, okay? So you need to wait for the retest. So this is the retest over here, then that is the TP Wajib, the mandatory take profit, because this is a downtrend. If I add, um, correction, uh, where is it, moving average, 50, exponential close. All right, so, this is an uptrend. We know that this is an uptrend, and every time the candles reject Malo, we know that this is a re-entry buy. So it's a lot safer that we take the mandatory take profit over here, all right? If you have seen just now, when it comes to learning BBMA, we need to understand that BBMA is telling you exactly where the market is heading because both Bollinger Band and Moving Averages are in the same category under the trend category. So you really need to understand that it tells you the trend of the market. So it's really important that you understand this uh, concept. Okay? All right. So another another extreme over here. So this is um, for you guys. Uh, this is a very good um, example of a double extreme. You have an extreme on momentum BB. Okay? Extreme MA outside of the ring event on momentum BB followed by extreme on sideways willing event. So this is a very good example of a double extreme, all right? So usually double extreme, your mandatory tech profit is at the other side of the willing event, so it's going to be in lower BB, okay? So over here, it's the same thing. MA outside, you have reverse, okay? So your MA outside over here, and this candle is the reverse, and this is the retest, okay? As soon as you have the retest, that's the point of entry sell, and obviously 
the TPYG for this one is at the other side of the blinger band. All right. But if you want to be safer, you're going to go to MidBB. That's still good enough. All right. So that's how you uh, identify and break down the extremes. All right. So, okay, let's move on. So, in um, BBMA Omali, he has identify that there's four different types of extremes. So obviously the extremes uh, during sideways linger band, the other one is extremes during momentum BB, the third one is extremes with momentum, and the fourth one is extremes with momentum. For beginners, I would highly suggest that you um, you just focus on these two particular type of extremes, all right? The first is extreme MA outside of momentum blinger band. All right. The second one is sideways BB extreme. That is already enough for you to be able to entry the market with a much more safer entry and um, with um, correction. It will be a lot easier if you make it simpler for you. Okay, because when you have too much information and you want to digest everything up, it's going to be really, really hard for anybody to to do that. So as be for beginners, I would highly suggest that you know you master, um, let's say for example that the extreme, you master extreme first and then you go to MLB, then you go to re-entry. So you need to do it uh, stage by stage. So at least the, you are able to uh, understand fully each of these uh, particular setups and signals, all right? Okay, so let me just go back to our notes. Okay, so in BBMA there are four signals and there are two particular types of setups. Signals is candlestick momentum, I already talked about this, so whenever you have a candlestick momentum, it tells you that it is the candle that closes outside of the momentum linger band. So identifying momentum linger band, we know that top and low BB are pointing away from each other. Okay, so that's a momentum linger band. So every time a candle closes outside, that's candlestick momentum. So whenever you have a candlestick momentum, it is a signal. What does it tell you? It tells you that there is a market strength. So if it's a CSM cell, then it tells you that the market is going down. So you know that the strength is going down. And the most important thing that you need to understand about this is it's going down and it's going to give you a re-entry. So every first CSM will create a re-entry. This is the most important thing that you need to understand. And I need you to write this down and I need you to remember this. Okay? The most safest re-entry that is available in BBMA is the re-entry after CSM. So please, please, I need you to learn this by heart. If you want to grow, if you want to do this, um, if you want to be a full-time trader, if you want to be a professional trader, if you are going to use BBMA, I highly suggest that you focus on learning the re-entry after CSM. I'll talk about that later on, okay? So other signals is uh, early candlestick directions. So obviously, when you have um, uh, MLB, so after MLB, if the candle break Malo, then that's the early candlestick direction. And if the candle breaks Malo 5, Malo 10, and middle BB, then that's the candlestick direction. So that confirms the movement of market going down to low BB. All right, so we know that. So after CSD, Sometimes the market retreats back up, so that gives you the re-entry after CSD. Okay, so re-entry, there's three different types of re-entry. The first re-entry is the re-entry after CSD, all right? The second one is the re-entry after CSM, and the third one is re-entry at mid-BB. So we'll talk about that later on. I'll show you some of the examples, okay? And obviously, I talk about uh, extreme signals, so it's really important for you to understand how signals, how extreme works. And now we'll talk about MLV and re-entry. Okay, 
So MLV, uh, also known as Market uh, MHV, Market Long Volume in Malay. So you really, really need to understand how this concept works. Okay. So here is a good example of extreme. All right. So we have extreme MA outside of the Bringer band. You have reverse. So you mark the highest body, and this is the retest. So after retest candle, then you have TP wajib or mandatory take profit at MA low or um, malo 5, malo 10 or mid BB. Um, again, the safest is going to be at malo 5. After mandatory take profit, the market went back up, all right, and it didn't manage to break top BB. So this is the second characteristics of MLB. First, you need to have an extreme and after TP wajib, after mandatory take profit, there's a candle that couldn't break the Bollinger Band. So if it's going up, there's a candle that couldn't break top BB. And then the third characteristic is the reverse candle. So another giveaway on this one that we know the market has lost its volume is when you have the Blinger Band at the top is already arching. So you know that it is going down already, that it has lost its um, momentum going up. So that's another giveaway over there, okay? As soon as you have candlestick that couldn't break BB and you have a reverse candle immediately after that candle, then you need to mark the highest body because you need to find out, you need to wait until there is a retest to complete the MLV setup, okay? So over here at this example, after the third characteristics of MLV, the market went down. You have CSD, you have re-entry. After CSM, you have re-entry. And then after that, it goes on, okay? However, this is the exact same market that happened earlier on. So you have extreme mandatory take profit. The MLV happening here, but we're waiting, marking the highest body. We're waiting for the retest. And obviously, if this is H1, it takes a lot of days until there's a retest. So it's very important for you that every time you have a marking highest body, you do not delete that because it will tell you, um, it will give you an indication that if there is a retest candle for MLV. That's why it's most of the traders out there, it, they always tell you to look left because history will always give you an indication of where the market is going to go, all right? So over here, this is the third uh, correction. This is the MLB, and it's just waiting for the retest. So the retest happens over here. So as you can see, this is a good example of an MLV. Sometimes, if you're lucky, the retest might be at this particular area. But at this example, I just, I just took this example just to give you that it is very important for you to make sure that your marking highest body is always there. All right? Okay. So before we move on to multi-time frame analysis, um, I think let, let me take a quick five minutes or ten minutes break before we go into that. All right? Okay. Let me just go back to that. All right. Okay. Five, ten minutes break, and we'll talk about multi time frame analysis.
Okay, um, let's continue. All right, so let me just delete this one. All right, so everybody, can everybody can you hear me? Okay, so let's talk about uh, multi-time frame analysis. So I'm just going to be quick about this one, all right? So when we do multi-time frame analysis, we need to be able to first find out the trend, second, define the type of linear band, third, we need to identify the signals and setups that is available on each particular time frame. And then the fourth one, is obviously to pinpoint the point of entry. So this is very important, all right? So I need you guys to write this down because I'm not going to point it out again. So first, you need to identify the trend. So there are two trends. Um, one is the major trend and the other one is the current trend. Second one is you need to identify what particular type of Bollinger band it is because based on the type of Bollinger band, then you will understand how the market is moving. All right. Then the third one is you need to identify the signals and setup that is available on that particular time frame. And the fourth one is finally identifying the point of entry. All right. So over here um, is a good example of um, alpha re-entry. Um, okay. So this is a re-entry after CSD, okay? So in GBP weekly, on the time frame weekly, we have an extreme and we have a candlestick direction. And after that, the market retraces back to MA high. So during the retrace, then we under understand that this is a re-entry cell, okay? However, in order to detect this re-entry cell, we need to be able to identify what is happening on daily and obviously um, H4. So we need to identify two lower time frames to make sure that it is telling you the same thing as what weekly is telling. So if the re-entry is weekly, then daily and H4 is the, daily is the second time frame, H4 is the third time frame. So what you need to identify is that in daily, the second time frame at least must have an extreme. So if it's, if it's um, re-entry cell in weekly, then daily must have an extreme cell, all right? So in H4, we need to be able to have at least an extreme or an MLV, so on uh, these two. So if you have three time frames pointing to the same direction, then it is much more... Um, easier and much more safer for us to entry the re-entry, okay? So this is uh, what we need to really, really understand when it, uh, on, the, on the basics of the re-entry, okay? So I think somebody have, um, somebody have uh, asked earlier on about CJ, all right? So we'll talk about CAD JPY, okay? So, CAD JPY, let me just do a quick analysis. So basically, I'm just going to go for monthly first. So on a monthly time frame, I will look that MA50 is above mid BB, so this is a downtrend. And second one is I'm going to look at the type of Blinger band, so Blinger band is sideways. So during sideways Blinger band, we know that if the candle breaks mid BB, then it's going to go for lower BB. So I know for a fact that you know it's probably going to go for lower BB. And the third one is obviously we need to look for signals and setup. Signals and setup that we have here is we have extreme sideways BB, candle reject, it goes to middle BB. And then we have candlestick direction, we have re-entry. So there's a potential of market going here. Okay, so we know the market is going down on a monthly time frame. Okay, so we go to weekly. Obviously, the trend is still the same. It's a downtrend because MA50 is above MBB. We have sideways Blinger band, and we have an extreme at extreme on sideways BB candle rejects of BB. So that's an extreme over there. All right, and on daily, daily, however, has a different trend because 
MA50 is below mid BB and it's an uptrend. However, uh, we have um, signals and setup that we have over here is that the candle has already break through mid BB and there's a potential of going to low BB and we don't have any candlestick momentum. So we have MLV and daily. All right. So now we move on to the um, lower time frame for the current trend. So the current trend, there is a potential of um, confirmation of downtrend in H4 because in a few hours time, we know that the next few candles, the the MA50 is going to cross over mid BB, so we know that's a potential of uh, confirmation of downtrend, and this is a momentum BB because top and low are opening. Okay, so we know this is a momentum BB. All right, so every time there is a momentum, candlestick momentum, we know that there is going to be a re-entry. Okay, let me just delete this. So we know that there is a potential re-entry in H4, all right? So that is the zone for the re-entry in H4. So signals and setup that we have, we have extreme, we have MLV. So basically we need to mark this. So we have extreme, all right? We have TPYJ, we have candle that couldn't break BB, reverse, and then we have CSD over here. We have re-entry after CSD. It went down here, it went back up, another extreme over here, sideways BB, then you have CSM. After CSM, then obviously that is a signal for us that tells us that there's a strength in the market going down. And obviously every first CSM will create a re-entry, okay? So over here, as you can see, this candle is too far away from the Blinger band. So obviously the candle needs to move sideways in order for it to go inside the blinger band. So that's why the candles are going slowly sideways back inside the blinger band. And also there's also potential of re-entry at H4, but it's not confirmed yet, all right? So we go to H1, the market is also downtrend. The type of blinger band is currently momentum blinger band. And we have a CSM and we have a re-entry zone over here. All right, so we also have a re-entry cell on H1, okay? So we need to confirm that this re-entry is happening over here. So if you look at F15, obviously as per the example that I told you earlier on, there is an extreme, the AMA50 is outside and you have this extreme at top BB. So this is a re-entry cell for H1, all right? So there's an extreme. So basically, now we have a re-entry in H1, re-entry after CSM. Then the second time frame will be M15. So you have an extreme at top BB, and you also have the confirmation of EMA50. All right. And an M5, you have an MHB. So this confirms you that three time frames is telling you that the market is going down. And needless to say that we know that from monthly down to the very lowest time frame, we know that this is a downtrend market. So it is very, very uh, good example for for you to entry this market. So if I were you, I will do a entry of this market uh, for sell. Okay. All right, so unfortunately, I think I just checked the chat. <laughs> I've been talking to myself for a while. Oh my goodness. All right. Okay, my bad. All right. Oh my goodness, I have to do this again. I need to go to sleep. What the fuck? Anyways. Let me let me take another coffee. Oh my goodness. I was like talking to myself. <laughs> All right. Again, take two. So um just give me a quick few minutes here. Just gonna check on some stuff. Um
my goodness, that was that was insane. All right, <laughs> all right. Okay, so again, let's start from the friggin' beginning. Okay, so first of all, we need to make sure number one, you are going to check for the trend. So there's two trends, major trend and current trend. So we'll start from monthly. So although you are um, scalper or intraday or swing trader, regardless of that, you need to be able to do your analysis from monthly to the lowest time frame. That is really important. You don't start from M5 to M to monthly. You start from monthly to M5. That's really important. All right. So first of all, we need to identify the trend on monthly. So M50 is above maybe B. That's a confirmation. And all right, so we know that this is a downtrend market and we need to identify the type of blinker band. So it's sideways blinker band. And the third one is we need to identify the signals and setup uh, that we have in this time frame. So we have extreme sideways blinker band. So the candle reject at the top BB and then it goes back to middle BB. As soon as it breaks middle BB, then we know that, you know, this is a candlestick direction. After candlestick directions, we have re-entry at middle BB. So we know the potential of the market is going down to low BB, all right? So for those who have, um, who understand next chart, so obviously you have, um, this is just a freebie, you have a bullish engulfing over here. So obviously you need to have a, correction, okay, you have a retest on the, on the bullish engulfing setup over here. So obviously when, when you look at this, the market is going there to retest that area, okay? So that's just a quick uh, analysis of the monthly. So now we go down to weekly. We know, um, first of all, one, we need to find the trend. So the trend is still downtrend, M50 about BB. This is number two, sideways BB, and you have an extreme uh, rejecting the top BB. So that's a confirmation. So signals and setup, you have an extreme over there. Then we go to daily. Daily is a bit different because uh, EMA 50 is below mid BB. This is an uptrend market. However, this uptrend market, we know that um, you have an extreme at the top over here and the candle has broke through the middle BB. So the target of this market is probably at low BB. All right. So that's it for daily. On H4, there's um, there's a potential of um, confirmation of the market going downwards. So we know for a fact that monthly, weekly, and daily are downtrend regardless of the daily EMA 50 at low, at below mid BB because over here, as we can see at the top of daily, we don't have any momentum. So it's um, MLV, all right? So we go to looking for the current trend. So obviously when when you do your analysis, you need to be able to project the market. You need to have some sort of, um, um, what do you call this, projection. So this is just uh, my projection that after a few hours, um, the Blinger Bands is going to go down and obviously EMA 50 will be crossing over the, the mid BB at some point. And we need to be able to identify the type of Blinger Band. So this is also a downtrend market. Type of Blinger Band is momentum Blinger Band. And obviously you have a momentum here. So when you have a momentum, you know that there is a market trend going downwards and every first CSM will have a re-entry, okay? So over here we know that there's a potential re-entry at H4 because of the CSM. However, if you can see this candle over here is too far away from the Blinger Band, all right? So when you see this, the candle's too far away from the Blinger Band, then you know what the market will try to do is gonna go sideways. So when it goes sideways, it will create a re-entry. So it's gonna go sideways, go back inside the Blinger Band. So once it's inside the Blinger Band, it has more room to go down to, all right? So that is creating a re-entry. So basically, if it's not creating a re-entry in H4, then obviously the next target will be in H1, all right? So the re-entry is happening here in H1 as we speak because of 
there's a CSM over here. So candlestick momentum, you have a re-entry at the MA high retest. So how do we confirm this? This is a re-entry over here is we check on the second time frame of that re-entry. As I told you earlier on that if there's EMA 50 outside of the linga band, then obviously the market is going to go sideways to create that re-entry on H1. And when you have extreme at this particular time frame, then you know that this is a point at which you should be entering sell. So when you do enter sell here, you are at the pinnacle of that re-entry. Okay? So for this example, let's just say that you have entered the market over here at the retest, then you are exactly at the pinnacle of that re-entry. Okay? Okay, so on the first so when you know that the re-entry is in H1, this is the first time frame. The second time frame will be M15, so you have an extreme at top BB, all right? And the third time frame for confirmation, you have an MHB, all right? So you have extreme, you have an MLB over here. So that is a confirmation that telling you the market's going down. So if you have three time frames telling you the market's going down, then obviously you are in good hands at which you just the only thing that that is going uh, that you always you're only gonna lose money on this particular market when you don't uh, take care of your margin so you need to be able to identify and you no know, calculate your margin when it comes to entering the market so um, I think we would be talking about that uh, after this in a few minutes about uh, money management all right so I think that's it for multi-time frame analysis. I need you guys to uh, look look it up. But the most important thing that I I can give you guys tonight is obviously the re-entry that I always 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 find is the re-entry after CSM because that is 80 to 90 percent success rate in uh, the market. As you can see over here, you have a first momentum. Then obviously this is the re-entry. So this is re-entry, although it takes few hours until it goes down. But you know that's uh, that is a uh, confirmed uh, pips over there. Then you have another momentum again. Then you will need you will get another re-entry. So what what you need to what you need to do now is to practice back test and also forward test. It's really important that when you have the system, you have the setup, you have the, you know how to identify the setup, then you need to be able to test it so that you have, you can build your confidence on the particular setup because by building this confidence, then you will gain consistency. All right. So I think um, that's it for multi-time frame analysis. Okay. Okay. So Give me a few minutes over here. Let me just uh, find the files for the money management.
Okay, um, let's talk about uh, money management. Let me just share this. All right, so regardless of um, how long you have been trading, regardless of what you're doing, but when when you started uh, trading Forex, you need to be able to tell yourself that you know, you're not doing this as a hobby, you're not doing this for fun, but you're doing this um, as a, sort, uh, a source of your income and hoping that one day that you'll be um, fully uh, doing this full time. So if you are that particular person that you want to do this full time and you want to you want to achieve um, financial freedom through uh, forex. Then you need to be able to have some sort of plan because you need to treat forex trading as a business, regardless of what particular business that you are doing. It is really important that you do this. Uh, the planning. Hang on, let me just give me a sec here. Just replying some. Okay, hang on. the money management again um, as I said um, when regardless of how long you have been trading regardless you're new um, regardless of um, what particular technique that you're using but it is really really imperative it's really really important that you have some sort of a plan because when you do forex trading, you need to have some sort of um, a business plan because you need to treat uh, this as a business. So if you're if you're a person that you know you're you you shouldn't be you shouldn't be uh, treating this uh, as a hobby or other um, you know a pastime stuff. But you know most of the most of the people who are learning or most of you guys who have joined me tonight is probably looking for a way to generate extra income or probably become a full-time trader one day so I really really need you to to um, listen uh, carefully on this particular part because whatever I have taught you with regards to BBMA the technique itself is only 10 to 20 percent of your success in trading 80% of your success is on money management because without money management, regardless how good you are in your entries, but if you don't have any any plans, then obviously you're gonna fail at some point. So it, it's not good that you know you win trades and then you lose. You win trades and you lose. At the end of the day, you don't have anything. You you always redeposit and you know it's is a bad habit. So you need to make sure that you properly plan uh, your your goals. So when I first started um, a year ago, um, I only started with uh, 10 USD as a capital. So I was telling myself that you know if I want to grow this money, then I need to have some sort of a plan. So let's just say that most people, in an average, that you guys started with $100. All right. So in $100, you need to be able to project. In a month time, that you know, what is your monthly target? So let's just say that in a month time, you need you want to grow this account by 20%. So you need to set yourself a goal that you'll be able to achieve. Because don't set yourself up for a target that is you know that you yourself don't don't um, believe that you can do it. So set yourself up with an achievable goal. All right, let's just say that we're going for a weekly target. 
daily target and monthly target, um, three monthly targets, and then a yearly target. So you need to be able to project those stuff. All right. So let's just say, for argument's sake, that you know I have a hundred dollars in my bank. All right, in my account, and I want to grow this account by twenty percent every month. Okay. So you need to be able to dictate what particular type of trading that you are going to use, all right? So if you're a, a person who is always who's busy uh, the whole day, for example, you're busy at work, you're busy uh, with, with multiple jobs or, you know, you don't really have much time in, in trading for X, then you need to be able to trade on swing entries or intraday entries, all right? So basically, what you need to set yourself up is you need to identify the time frames at which your particular trading style will be suit suitable for you. So you need to adapt your trading style based on the time that you have for trading, all right? So you don't try to scalp when you don't have time to actually monitor the market, all right? So these are the time frames that I use. So if you're going for a swing setup, then you go for a setup in daily, weekly, and monthly. When I talk about setups, I'm talking about re-entries, all right? So when you go for daily re-entries, then obviously this re-entries is the type of re-entries you can, you can hold for, for days or weeks, okay? So when you go for intraday, then these are the type of trades that you can hold for maybe two to three days or a week. And when you go for scalping, these are the trades that you just hold for a few minutes or a few hours. So these are the things that you need to understand. And these are the particular time frame at which you should be entering the market. And these are the particular targets that you should be aiming to get. So those are the particular pips that you're, you're aiming to get. All right? So when you understand and when you have decided what particular type of trader you are, then you are be able to do this, all right? So over here, let's just say that, you know, you decide, define what trader you are, and then now you need to define what type of trading style you're going to do. So if you're a person that has a lot of time, then you can go for scalping. Let's just say that we're going to go for intraday. So maybe I have time in the morning during breakfast, I have time at lunch, and maybe at in the afternoon I have a few hours, and maybe at night I have a few hours. So there's a particular, you know, normal uh, daily routine of uh, the average person. So intraday would be suitable for this particular type of uh, trading. So when you have your trading style that you're going to go to, then you need to identify the time frames that you're going to go into. So you need to find re-entries at this particular time frame. And then you need to set your trading strategy, all right? So based on this strategy, let's just say that, you know, I want to aim 20% on a monthly target. So this 20% of $100, that's 20 USD, all right? So do not try to aim, earn $20 over a period of one day. That's insane. You're just, you're just um, pressuring yourself. So in a, in a month, there's 20 days worth of trading days. So that gives you exactly $1 per day for you to achieve this 20% monthly target. So if you divide this to a much more achievable goal on a daily basis and on a weekly basis, then that's more achievable in terms of trying to achieve your target. Okay, so let's just say that every day I want to trade one cent and my I'm going to aim for 20 pips. So 20 pips will give you about $2, for example. So if, if I manage to earn $2 a day and the minimum is $1 per day, so I'm going to make about $40 in a month. So I will be able to grow my account at about $120 and I will also have $20 worth at the end of the month for me to withdraw. So that is that is some of the things that you really, really need to think about when it comes to trading. It's not just finding setups and just go entry. It's just 
you know, you are shooting at, without any particular plan. So you need to have some sort of plan such as this simple plan that I have. Okay? As I said, last thing before before I leave tonight, you know, whatever technique you're using, regardless of BBMA, regardless of Fibonacci or support resistance, all of these techniques are most of the times are telling the same thing. However, it depends on the person which particular technique is much more easier for them to adapt to. However, regardless how good your technique is, but if you don't have the discipline, your money management, either your strategy, your trading plans is not going to work. You're not going to be able to grow your account if you don't have any plans. So. Uh, my last advice for tonight is please, after this, I do want you to practice your BBMA knowledge, hone your skills in, in terms of the tree stuff. The most important things that you really need to understand is extreme, MLV, and re-entries. These are the things that you really, really, really need to fully understand the mechanics of it. However, this is just 10% of your trading success. So please, for this example, you know, a hundred dollars and if you just practice this for let's just say a month or three months, just practice every entry you're just gonna use one cent, for example. The market does not move one thousand pip over a period of one day. If you make a mistake on your entry, this one cent will not you will not lose your hundred dollars over a period of one day. That is just impossible. Okay? So if you follow the SOPs, if you do your market analysis, if major trend and current trend is also telling you the market is going down and you go for sell, then you know ninety percent of that you will be able to achieve your target. So, you know, um that is just a really, really good way of, you know, identifying what particular market you're going into. All right? So I think that's it for tonight. And I hope that um, it, is, um, it is beneficial for you guys. And I hope that I, I was able to help you out with some of the stuff in BBMA. But uh, if there's any more questions, I mean, there's a webinar chat group that we have open. So please uh, just drop your questions over there. And if I have more time, I'll, I'll cover that in another session in the next uh, few weeks, I guess. All right. So uh, thank you and have a good night. Assalamu alaikum. So, for those who have entered GU, you know, just hold your position, man. Hope it's going to be blue soon. All right? So, that's your free signal for the night. And, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.